guys, I am Harshi Like the Chocolate. I am an artist and in this series, I teach you how to paint the most iconic paintings in the easiest way possible. The painting that we are recreating today is called L'Empere de Lumière, which was created by René Maitret in mid 19th century. And you might recognize this painting when it made the news early this year when it was sold for whopping 42 million dollars i will be telling you more about this painting as the session goes but we will be recreating this painting using gouache paints for this session you will require all these materials feel free to pause and collect your supplies you will be requiring transfer paper only if you want to trace the sketch in this video i will be painting on a watercolor pad in my last video i taught you guys how to paint hokusai's great wave if you haven't seen it or want to recreate this painting you can click on the link in my descriptions I prefer using watercolor pads because the quality of their paper is pretty good and the glued edges from all four sides prevents it from curling. With this painting, the first thing we are going to do is sketch the outlines with a sharp or mechanical pencil. I have created a rough outline for you which you can download, print and use as reference and you can find its link in my description. If you want, you can even trace the sketch using a transfer paper or you can just follow along and sketch with me when you are recreating master's work it is always good to have reference here i am using standard grid technique to ensure that my sketch has perfect proportions here i am folding my reference print to divide it in a four cross four grid then using pencil and ruler i will make the same grid on my paper as well let us first sketch the hero of the painting which is the mansion this one is slightly off centered and lies in the third row and the height is almost half of the grid with these guidelines we will start sketching the house first we will do the walls whenever you are making an under sketch for a painting try to keep your pencil marks as slight as possible then we will make four lines for the guidelines to make windows on both the levels finally the terrace is almost as high as the window add the slopes on both the side to finish the main frame finalize your lines using a ruler now we will add in the doors and windows and the frames inside it and finally add the chimney sweep the other element we are going to draw is the rock on the bottom left of the painting this rock is the most curious part of the painting for me it creates an illusion that there are more hidden elements in this painting when there are none now sketch the rock in the right grid now we will mark the part of the ground which is lit by the mansion this area almost extends equally on both the sides now let's add the trunk of the main tree with just two parallel lines and all Although the ground looks pitch dark, it has very subtle hues, which makes the painting look so much more realistic. So draw these lines in just like that. It doesn't really have to be that precise next we will work on the canopy of tree on the horizon it's a good idea to fold away all the parts of the grid that you're not using you know to simplify the process starting from the house make squiggly lines going up and down following the track of the canopy do the same on both the sides use similar lines to complete the tree as well once you're done with the tree the last part is to add all the clouds go one grid at a time and start adding rough outlines lines of each cloud and while you are doing that let me tell you a little bit about the artist René Maitret he was a surrealist artist based in Belgium who had the most profound imagination he loved juxtaposing expected with the impossible he did not stick to a particular style and considered it a distraction for his viewers he considered himself to be a visual poet and loved hiding metaphors and puns in his work some of his other famous work is son of the man the Castle of Pyrenees, the Calcomania collective inventions and so many more. Coming back to our painting, once you are done doing the under sketch, you have to use a kneadable eraser to remove all the excess graphite and really fade all the lines as much as possible. This will make your painting process so much more cleaner and refined. Please also make sure that all the grid lines are gone. You can stop when your lines don't smudge into each other. And now that we are done with the sketching process, we will move on to painting it. Gouache is such a versatile color to recreate 
any of the master's pieces. I truly believe that for the process of learning, even for all the hobbyists, it is not necessary to invest in really expensive colors. Hemic wash paints come with a very good quality at a very reasonable price. I highly recommend them. Now these colors are water-based. What I'm spraying on them is just water with few drops of concentrated fragrance because I like my colors, my paintings and my workspace smelling amazing. The fragrance part is optional. I just like it that way. You can just spray it with plain water. These paints come with a flat palette but if you prefer you can use whatever palette you are comfortable with. Next we will require a few brushes. If you have an old flat brush it would be perfect for painting the clouds and the sky i like to use two of these sizes a big and a small then you'll need a small round brush and finally a detailing brush for all the details in the mansion and on the tree you'll need a rough rag to clean your brushes finally since we are using wash paints and they are water activated we will be needing two containers of water one of which we will be using to clean our brush and second one we will be using just for painting I am running pretty low on my white color so I will also be using a refill from the same brand and that's all the supplies so let's start painting. The first thing that we are going to paint is a day lit sky. Now as you can see the sky very subtly gets lighter as we go towards the horizon and the blue in the sky is very very light. So we will first begin with mixing the shade of our sky. The thumb rule of color mixing is that you always start with the lightest color. In our case it is white. I am taking about half a tablespoon of white color and then gradually adding this acid blue color which is the second blue tone in the Hemi wash paints to my white. The darker colors tend to be more empowering on the mix. So please make sure to introduce them gradually. Along with getting the right shade we are also trying to get the right texture of our paint which is like shampoo or conditioner and not like a toothpaste. For that we will add little bit of water and mix the whole color to ensure that there are no lumps. I think I need to make it just a little bit darker so I will add another dash of my blue color. It is also a good idea to save little bit of this color just in case you want to recreate it or use it for touch ups later. Last thing before we start painting is if you want to have nice and clean boundaries you can use washi tapes. I prefer washi tapes for this process because they are cheap, they are soft on paper and they look so cute. Now using your biggest flat brush and the blue color we just mixed we will start painting the sky. We are going to paint from top to the bottom and as we go lower towards our horizon, we will keep making our color lighter and lighter. We will avoid painting the cloud area to make sure they remain light and puffy. And for the sky, I like to use a very light hand and a dab dab motion to get that natural cloudy puffy edge. Try to maintain this archy motion to get that even tone in the sky. Girls, think of it like applying foundation on your face. Paint almost two thirds of your sky with the same tone that you created. And after that, we will make it slightly lighter by adding just a little droplet of white to our existing color. Make sure that the color has the same consistency, so add water accordingly. Once you're happy with the color, continue doing the same dabby dab motion and then use your finger to smudge the color in between. This is pretty much like smudging your contours when doing makeup to get that natural tint on your face. As you go lower towards the horizon, the clouds will start to become smaller. So it's a good idea to switch to a smaller flat brush and continue doing the same. Also remember to paint over the edges where the sky meets the trees. This will ensure that the sky is still visible in the background when we add the details in the canopy of the tree. Now go all over the sky and add touch-ups where needed. Once you're happy with the sky, take a little break. Leave your painting alone for 10 to 15 minutes for dry time. Now we will add shades to our clouds. For the shadows of the cloud, we will mix a light blue color with is lighter than our sky with just a hint of black color. Make sure that you take only one little dot of your black color and for the blue you can use the same shade that you use in the sky. Making sure that your reference image is open next to you, start working one cloud at a time. 
I like using my iPad for the reference as I can zoom into the exact area of what I will be working on. Identifying the shaded area in the cloud, use your small flat brush and the same dabby dab motion to add the shades wherever required. Once you have added all the shaded part, you can use just white color and start adding the highlights in the cloud and also blending the shades between the dark and the light. You can even switch to a small round brush to add little details in the clouds. One tip to consider while you are doing the clouds is less is more. Once you think that your cloud is looking nice and puffy, it's a good idea to leave it alone. Now continue working on the sky one cloud at a time. It's important that you take your sweet time with your masterpiece. And while you work on your clouds, let me tell you a little bit more about this painting. L'Empere de la Mer is a series of 17 oil paintings created in mid-19th century. René believed that these paintings are like visual poems. He became obsessed with the paradox of day and night coexisting. In most of his paintings, the featured light in the dark is from the lamp post. But there are only two paintings in this series where the light is coming from within the house, which I feel adds more drama to the painting and makes the paradox more evident. Personally, this is my favorite painting of his series. The house looks so cozy and majestic. I can almost imagine myself sitting in there. Talking about the house, that is the next part that we are going to paint. Although the bottom of the painting looks completely black, there are very subtle hues of blues and yellows in the painting that makes it look so much more dramatic. The windows are lit with orange and yellow colors, almost feel like they are on fire. Now for mixing this dark blue shade, I am taking equal ratios of black and ultramarine blue. Add just a little bit of water, then using your detailing brush, mix the color and start painting the walls and roof of the mansion. Making sure to leave the space for the doors, windows and the part of the tree that overlaps the roof. Once you are done painting the mansion, you will make the color a little bit darker by adding black to it. Now using the darker color, paint the canopy between the tree and the house. We'll also be using the same color to paint the canopy all over. Try to make the canopy outline as detailed as possible using your miniature brush. And then using a flat brush, fill the entire space in. And then repeat the same process on the other side. Zoom into the canopy part of your reference to replicate it as close as possible. Now using a flat brush and black color, make the outline of the lit area on the ground just like you can see me doing over here. Cover entire top part of the ground with just black color. To mix the color for the next part of the ground, we will add just a little bit of mustard to the black color and water it down. Then using similar dab 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 motion, we will paint the second half of our ground. Finally, using just the black color, we will paint the last part of our ground. Avoid painting the stone area while you are painting the ground as it has more details and is similar color of the house. Using the same dark blue color which we use in the mansion, block the left highlighted part of the rock. Then taking just black color on the tip of your fingertip, fade the blue color of the rock in the dark background. Block the right side of the rock with just the black color. Now add the details on the rock like the craters and the highlights. After the rock, we will be working on the part of the ground which is lit by the mansion. To get this color, mix 1 is to 1 ratio of black and mustard color. But before that, use the blue color of the rock as a transition between the lit and the dark area. Using the miniature brush, cover the half of that area with blue color. And keep adding more and more mustard color to your dark colors as you move towards the center of the lit area. Now using your flat brush and black color, block the entire tree. Make sure to use a miniature brush to add the details in the tree just like we did in the canopy. Once you are done painting the tree, leave your painting alone for a while so it can dry. The painting is almost done. The last thing that we need to do is add some warm colors to the windows and on the ground. For this, I'm using the orange and the medium yellow color. Zoom into that beautiful mansion for your reference. Then start by blocking all the doors and windows with the yellow color. To that, using your orange color, add in the darker parts of the windows and the doors. Then use the dark blue color to add the grills. And finally, using your yellow and orange color, add the highlighted grass on the ground. And with that, our mansion is complete. Now, the only last thing that is left is adding the highlights in our tree. 
for this we will be using the blue color that we use in the sky and our miniature brush with help of your reference add all the little blue dots in the entire tree fun fact the first painting which was sold of the series was actually auctioned for 80 million dollars because of which the estimate of this painting was between 35 to 55 million and it was sold for 42 millions to me this painting represents my state of mind when i start creating art i feel like the time moves a little bit different when day turns into night i seriously have no idea maybe metroid also felt this way when he was creating his pieces with that our painting process is complete and the only thing left to do is peel off the tape hmm. i can never get over how satisfying this is now that you have recreated L'Empere de Lumiere for yourself and know a little bit more about this painting and the artist, do you still feel that it is overvalued at $42 million or are you proud of recreating something which is worth so much more than you could have ever thought of? Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed my session and if you like this video please like share and subscribe and please share your masterpieces with me on any of the social media i go by art by hershey everywhere thank you so much guys have a great day bye